Do you have advice for us managing our portfolios on the difference between theory and practice? Well, let me say a couple of things about that. You know, I read a lot of the financial analysts journal articles and a lot of the journal of portfolio management articles and I can understand about 15 to 20 percent of them. They've got all these Greek formulas and uh, they make things very complicated and they're looking backward always uh, so they're doing a lot of data, data mining. If you look backward and see something that doesn't work you throw it in the ash can and find something that does work and believe me if you do enough data mining uh, you can find a lot of things that work uh, in the past, that have worked in the past, <laughs> I should say. So a lot of the theory out there, I think, is cast in a very misleading and foolish light. It uh, doesn't allow for costs. It uh, doesn't talk about what strategies you should have once you do invest. Uh, and there's, there's this uh, back testing, as it's called, that, that leaves me uh, dubious about theory. Indeed, I wonder if anybody who writes these academic theory articles has ever followed his own advice. <laughs> Think about that. <laughs> and uh, so, practice, I would favor over theory. Uh, but, you know, if you want to tell me that theory, gross return minus cost equals net return, I would follow that. <laughs> uh, you know, is that a formula? Is that a theory? Is that a practice? It's certainly a practice. And it's certainly a theory, too. There's this old saying about, uh, it works in practice, why the heck doesn't it work in theory? <laughs> an interesting question. And uh, there's two, there's, I think there's much too much, much too much, kind of the search for the holy grail uh, in, in investing, the search for the market beating, consistently market beating formula, uh, without the knowledge that, as far as I know, in, in human history, the Holy Grail does not exist. So you don't want to spend an awful lot more time looking for it.